This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Hey there, cat lovers. Welcome to Nine Lives with Dr. Cat. I'm your host, Dr. Katherine Prim, and I'm a small animal veterinarian and cat lover. Well, the whole world has been shaken by the coronavirus threat. And as veterinarians, we are all specifically concerned about the role animals might play in the transmission or, or just the role they might play with this disease. I have with me today Dr. Adam Christman, and he is the Chief Veterinary Officer of DVM 360. And he and I are going to talk a little bit about some of the news headlines, the tigers, and if you need to have some fears or what you need to know about your pets, specifically your cats, and the coronavirus. So we'll be right back after this message. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. When we put him on the Dynavite, he took right to it. All of these symptoms disappeared. Dynavite is nutrition. If you want the dog to be healthy, you got to feed it something healthy. Something that he actually likes to eat. You need to put him on Dynavite. Dynavite for life. If you love your dog, you don't just want him healthy, you want him to be happy. You won't believe how happy your dog will be. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back to Nine Lives with Dr. Cat on Pet Life Radio. I have with me Dr. Adam Chrisman. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm doing great. So it's really great to have you here. I reached out to you because I saw these headlines about tigers and COVID, and I thought, wow, I would really like to hear what Dr. Christman says and thinks about this so that my listeners can learn a little bit more about this. Can you sort of sum up the story for us? Yeah, so basically, in a, in a nutshell, there was a handler that was actively shedding COVID-19, but was not clinical for it. And so this is what makes this virus a little bit tricky is because of the active shedding process without showing signs of clinical disease. And subsequently, this amazing handler too was didn't know he was you know positive for it, but was taking wonderful care of, of these cats and large animal cats at the Bronx Zoo. Unfortunately, several of the, not just one, one tiger, but a couple within the community developed COVID-19. And the reason why they knew that is because of the fact that they were showing signs of respiratory illnesses. And so they figured since the area of Manhattan is really inundated right now with COVID-19, might as well test for that respiratory panel as well as other ones. And these cats came up showing COVID-19. But what this really means is, well, in new information in the veterinary field, the fact that cats are a little bit susceptible to this particular strain of coronavirus from humans. But, but it's very, very important to stress this, that we cannot get corona from cats and dogs. So that's a very important thing to, to stress. But we as veterinarians, we know, we, got, we know corona because we learn about this in veterinary school. You know, we learn about it, about cats. We know about it in our large animals as well. So um, the fact that the cats can get Corona-19 is not too much of a surprise because we know that cats are susceptible to Corona disease in general. So I want to I want to back you up because, yes, that is the most important point is that that the tigers aren't a danger to anyone and that our house cats are not a danger to us. But the tigers were tested. Now, testing has kind of been in the news a little bit. And there are people saying, why did we waste tests on tigers and and so on? Can you talk a little bit about how the tigers were tested? Yeah, they were PCR tested similar to humans. However, they did not, I'm using air quotes here, to not waste the tests on the cats for animals. It did go to, to the veterinary school at Cornell University, as well as double checked at the National Veterinary Labs in Ames, Iowa. So I get asked this, is there a test to check for COVID-19? And yes, there is, of course. But we now know that we don't necessarily need to test all the animals for it, all dogs or cats. But if cats are showing signs of it, 
it is something to be mindful of. And no, we're not taking away from the humans that need those tests so desperately. Great. That's the point I wanted to make. So talk a little bit about the handler and the cats. Obviously, this handler didn't know that, was it a he? Didn't know that he was ill. Yeah. Yeah. And so how intimate do you feel he interacted with the cats to facilitate this spread? I think my understanding is there probably was some aerosolization of nasal discharge or sputum, you know, cloth respiratory, similar things that you and I would have for a flu. And so he might have come into contact with potentially like their food or their interactions, their um, substrates that they were interacting with from him cleaning. So there is potential for them to obviously be inoculated with the disease and show signs of it. So I want to stress it's this would be you and I would be just as culpable of, of doing something like this because you just didn't you wouldn't know if you were showing signs of it. So by no means is it his fault. I know he feels terrible about this, but what this does show is how good accountability and ownership of showing of a zoo taking care of responsibility and letting the public know, because now we have greater information about this because, you know, these large cats are just in the same family as these domesticated cats too. So this really shed light on what we're dealing with, with our recommendations through the American Veterinary Medical Association. So yeah, he had some intimate contact with them just from, you know, obviously they they have to be fed and cleaned and so forth, but, you know, he tried to do everything that he could to help minimize contact. So you mentioned the American Veterinary Medical Association, and I think that is really important. What are they saying about this whole headline? So the the most important thing, I think the take home message is for pet owners to not panic. And so the recommendations are they just using your due diligence. So their recommendations for any owner that's suspecting to be showing signs of respiratory disease or even coming down, unfortunately, with COVID is to allow another pet parent in the household take care of the cat or the dog, more specifically cats, just because there is potential transmission for that. So in other words, if that involves cleaning the litter boxes or feeding them, of course, we want to smush up our cats and our dogs and and love them unconditionally, of course. But in times of COVID, and if we're showing signs of that, it's recommended to not do that, of course. So I know there was a particular situation where an elderly woman over by me here in New Jersey, she had nobody. <laughs> and she unfortunately came down with COVID. And one of the technicians at the veterinary hospital knew this cat. And she was very smart, this woman, to say, listen, I have no one. I know only my veterinary hospital that could take care of this cat. And this girl ended up adopting this cat. And she says, listen, if once you get better, I'd be more than happy to, um, you know, to give the cat back to you, of course. But I just love that example because so many members in our community are doing things just to step up and help the community out, just help avoid cats going to shelters or for whatever reason it is. But the AVMA really does recommend hand washing huge washing your before and after playing or interacting with your pets. And then if we're suspecting a potential disease or showing signs of respiratory, one is to go to your doctor and two, to let your veterinarian know too, that there's potential COVID interaction that might be happening. So do you know how sick these tigers were and what happened to them? My understanding is they weren't, they're doing great by the way now. And they were showing signs of respiratory disease. So I think coughing was a big thing. And I believe some nasal discharge. So nothing, I don't know if they had a fever. I don't think it was, you know, severe signs of respiratory distress, but like your typical upper respiratory thing that we would see associated with cats. I don't know if there was like uh, ocular discharge, but I know it was on the mild side and they did the the right thing by just checking and, and double checking to make sure there was no signs of other viruses that could be present. And then they ended up showing signs for COVID. You know, you and I, when we're practicing, there's a, a whole PCR panel that veterinarians could run called the respiratory panel. And it could look like for, it could look at other diseases such as Khaleesi virus, rhinotracheitis, mycoplasma. There's other upper respiratory diseases that cats can get. So it's not one of the, the top lists that we consider doing for COVID-19. But now because of this pandemic here, it is something for us to be more mindful of. So I actually got a a correspondence from the veterinary lab, IDEX veterinary lab, that explained that exact thing that they have been able to tack the coronavirus onto their regular respiratory panel and they're screening tons of pets just to be sure that the human population is safe just in case there was something else that we didn't know. So you're right. It's not taking any test kits away from human beings in any way, but we still just kind of want to know. We just don't know enough about this disease. Don't you agree? 
That's exactly right. We don't know enough about this. And, and I know there's a lot of frustration, but us veterinarians and human doctors, we understand about viruses because we know that there needs to be more research. And the pet owners, the human population out there, there's anxiety. And it's just because there's a lot of unanswered questions. What happens if there's resurgence of this again? What happens? Can we get coronavirus again? Are we technically, quote unquote, cured from it if we already have the coronavirus? There's What about herd population vaccination type things? And what about the vaccine? There's so many things that, that are left unanswered that we just don't know. We don't know if we are going to be vaccinating pets against COVID-19. We hope there's a vaccine that comes out eventually, but is there going to be one for animals? We don't know. Right. We won't know unless we're testing and watching and paying attention. So I would caution all of my listeners, if your pet is sick, as always, contact your veterinarian, especially now when we're trying to learn, we're in learning mode. But if your pet is sick in any way, contact your veterinarian. Veterinarians are working really hard to be available to you during this time when everybody's social distancing. And I know I personally... I'm providing a lot of services for my clients that I don't normally do. And if your pet is sick, don't hesitate to reach out. I think you would probably agree with that, wouldn't you, Dr. Christman? I agree with you 100%. I, I love that you said that. The veterinarians are going above and beyond around the country to help service you guys, uh, those of you that are listening too. And so pack a little bit of your patients, but they're also making sure that both you, your fur babies, and their healthcare team are protected at the same time. And this curbside concierge, you know what? A lot of the cat owners are loving it because you're just, they're in the cat carrier. You have a, a healthcare team member that comes in, takes them out. I mean, yes, it's nice to be with them throughout the visit, but what nice service is that though, to, that they can maybe call you or chat with you over the phone. But you know, the overall care and well-being of your cat is so well taken care of right now during COVID-19. So I think this might change the model a little bit going forward. <laughs> I agree. I did have a, a client bring a cat in without a carrier. So uh, I would say to all of my listeners, if you're going to the vet and we are kind of having to do curbside, make sure that your cat is in a carrier. That is risky to transfer a cat from a car to a facility on a street. Um, we all kind of freaked out. And if you're sick, please tell your veterinary team, even if your pet is not sick, if you're sick, please tell your veterinary team. That is also very important. Yeah. If you have a carrier that has rubber bands around it and is about 20,000 years old, like, come on, please work with us a little bit. We want to make sure for the safety and well-being some of these hospitals are on busy roads and they really want to make sure that that carrier is nice and sealed. So if you don't have one, go on Amazon or wherever, get a nice good one. But I can't stress that to you enough too. Yeah, I saw a cat that had a leash on and these cats have never maybe left the house ever. And this is the, you know, the one time of year that they're coming out and we're trying to take a nice fear free initiative. Well, that ain't it. <laughs> That's not how you start their visit. <laughs> No, a cat getting away from my uh, assistant on the highway would not be an ideal visit at all. So, okay, well, I want to take a quick break before we wrap up all that we've talked about, because I think a lot of the things that we're talking about today are really important. So I want to come back to it. So let's take a quick break and be right back. Hey everyone, Michelle Fern here. I have the perfect gift for Mother's Day. You know, I can't visit my mother-in-law as much as I'd like to, and that's why I love the Skylight Frame. It's a touchscreen photo frame that you can email photos to, and they appear in seconds, so my mother-in-law can see the pictures right away. And I have a great savings for you. Just go to skylightframe.com slash pet and you'll save $10. That's right. S-K-Y-L-I-G-H-T-F-R-A-M-E dot com slash pet, P-E-T, and you'll save $10. And get ready to receive sheer happiness thank yous from your recipient because they will love this. Let's Talk Pets. Let's Talk Pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com Welcome back to Nine Lives with Dr. Cat. 
And I have Dr. Adam Christman with me today, and he and I are talking about the headlines of the tigers infected with coronavirus and what they might need to know moving forward as we go through this all together. So, Dr. Christman, I agree, and I had Dr. Jason Stoll on the show at one point, and he talked about infectious disease. And this was a while ago when this was all first starting. And he said, you know, I'm a little bit worried about cats because of the way a cat system is with coronavirus. And so now we know that feline species do have some vulnerability. Do you know of any cats that have actually died from this? No, I don't. And, you know, from I'm on the board from the New Jersey Veterinary Medical Association. So I do say I have a good communication with the AVMA. And we are keeping a note on that just to see, because the question is, should this be a reportable disease? You know, and there are reportable diseases that we have as veterinarians where we have to use our due diligence to let somebody know. For instance, let's just say rabies is a very common one that your listeners would know that we have to make sure that's reportable. So with this one, we don't know. Again, I wish I could tell everybody a a solid answer, but, you know, I don't know of any cats that have died, which is great. And yeah, cats are susceptible to Corona. We know this as veterinarians too. So I wasn't surprised when this headline came out. I think a lot of veterinarians weren't surprised because we knew that there was a potential for this to happen. But um, yeah, no, I hope that this doesn't become a huge trend where cats are getting really sick from from COVID. And um, it would be fantastic if they have a vaccine for both the human side and then more specifically for cats going forward down the road. I haven't seen any of my feline patients. The, the ones that belong to the frontline workers. None of my patients have yet had anything that I suspected coronavirus. And I haven't heard a lot of people talking about companion pets, but I think because of the tigers, we kind of know that it's a possibility. Would you think that would be reasonable to say? I agree. And I do like what you said before about the respiratory panel. That's good to know that IDEX is adding on that uh, COVID-19 PCR in there too, I guess, right? Well, they did. And they said for thousands of pets, they happen to be dogs, but for thousands of pets, they did not find a single positive. Okay. So, so that was, I thought that was a little bit more like a peace of mind issue, but obviously I have a lot of cat lovers and cat owners that come to my practice and um, we've had some, you know, people that were sick. So I think that it's time to be calm and it's time to include your veterinarian, but no panic. No panic at all. No panic. We don't need that right now. It's it's already stressful times to begin with. If someone out there is sick or thinks that they might be sick, how would you advise them to best handle their cat? I know you mentioned someone gave their cat to a veterinary employee. How would you best recommend handling that? Well, having a conversation with your family is important. And so some of these patients, human patients that are coming down with COVID-19, you know, they're either on the mild side or severe side, but you have to have a conversation with your family to see if somebody else can help be the caretaker for these pets in this household. You know, some people, unfortunately, like I said, may not have anybody within their family or friends network that can do that. So reaching out to the veterinary team, your veterinary hospital, they love you. They're an extension of your family, you guys. We're here for you. So they may not be able to take in your cat, but they may know somebody else who can. So that's really, really important. But at least if you're sick and showing signs, do not be the primary caretaker and mushing up your cat. I know it's hard. Trust me, we're animal lovers or ourselves. We get it. But for the well-being of your cats out there, it's better to have somebody else take care of it. My brother, for instance, my brother just had COVID and he was a regional manager for Costco. And he's like said to himself, like, I, this is inevitable. Like, I just knew that I was going to get it. And, um, you know, he has a dog. We don't, he doesn't have a cat, but he was responsible about it. Plus he has kids. So he isolated himself. You know, yeah, it kicked his butt pretty hard, but he's doing fantastic now. But, you know, I told him he was worried, more worried about the dog. And he says, is she going to be okay? I said, absolutely going to be fine. But he was just wanting to use his due diligence just to make sure that, you know, no, nobody gets sick from that. So I think that what they're saying is if you're sick to isolate yourself where you sleep and where you eat from your other family members. And I think that would probably apply to your cat to have someone else clean up after your cat. Have someone else snuggle your cat and have someone else feed your cat if possible. And if not, of course, washing your hands and maybe even wearing a mask when you're handling your cat might be legitimate advice. What do you think? 
I agree. Listen, I got my own mask that I made up here too, and I can't leave the house. I can, for here in New Jersey, it's essential for us. It's mandatory for us to be wearing masks to go out for any essential services, whether it be the supermarket or doctor's offices. But yeah, handling your pets, and if you happen to have or showing signs of respiratory illness, absolutely. Because again, we just don't know exactly how this transmission can occur. And if you can minimize it by wearing a mask, that would be great. And you can still mush up on your baby that way too. They may like they may make mittens off of your mask. <laughs> or make well, I don't know. You know I don't know. I, mean? I think probably you're not gonna be able to snuggle your cat for a little while. But yeah. cats are so independent, I think they'll be okay without that. Yeah. So uh, you gave us some really good information. I'm glad the tigers are all okay. And I'm glad that so far, so good on companion pets and just everyone listening, just make sure you communicate with your veterinarian. We're here to help you and we care about your pet and you. So if your pet is sick or if you are sick, do not hesitate to reach out to your veterinary team. Dr. Crispin, it's always fun to talk to you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me on your show and thank you for everything you're doing. You really are a standout. So thank you. Well, it's my pleasure because it's kind of fun. But, uh, of course, I want to thank my amazing producer, Mark Winter, because without him, we would not have a Nine Live show at all. And I want everyone to go out and have a perfect day. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.